Hi, Dr. Lou Polsfer here, and I'm going to talk about constraints and creativity. Now, this is something I've addressed before in my learning game design class, but it comes up so often that I feel it's necessary to add it to this game about this uh, course about designing war games. What I want you to understand is that constraints do not interfere with your creativity, rather they promote creativity. This is true in almost any artistic field, and game design is an artistic field. Great artists will sometimes break the rules, quote unquote, but mostly they follow them. In times when there are no rules, as in the Rococo period in music or in modern art painting, few if any masterpieces are created. Rollo May put it this way, creativity arises out of the tension between spontaneity and limitations, the latter like the riverbanks, forcing the spontaneity into the various forms which are essential to the work of art or poem. Beginners need to learn the rules, whether they're game designers or in some other artistic discipline, and they need to learn to do them do it well to follow those rules before they break them. This is part of what famous creators were doing early in their careers. Their work is not necessarily noteworthy, except for what comes after it. They're learning the rules. The, the famous artist Pablo Picasso said, learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. Even Ludwig van Beethoven followed the rules when he was learning and is in his first two symphonies. They're clearly not anybody else's symphonies, but they're not like later Beethoven. They're still classical. It was in the third symphony that uh, he had his breakthrough. And even then, mostly he followed the rules, even as he was creating new rules. So there's a lot of confusion about creativity. Creativity isn't wild imaginings. It's not brain fever. It's something that's productive. Creativity is about finding really interesting ways to deal with constraints. These ways may be unique, but they'll certainly be interesting. So a typical comment that sort of shows how this goes, somebody on LinkedIn said, I think we can't start a game with a genre and setting because that will limit our ideas for creating unique games. And my answer was, you've got to choose some constraints or you'll never get started. You have to start with some constraints. My experience as a teacher to, for video game design students was that it was better to provide students with lots of constraints rather than turn them loose to do whatever they want. Because in that case, they tended to freeze up. So embrace constraints. Welcome constraints. Carte blanche is not desirable. Those students I just mentioned, if they were given carte blanche to do whatever they wanted, they would tend to come up with a game that was very much like the last game they really liked or the last game they played. In other words, with no constraints, their creativity just wasn't there at all. Constraints provide a place to start. What are some sources of constraints in game design? Well, they can come from your own intentions. If you decide you're going to design a one-hour trading game, or if you're going to design a three or four player game about the Napoleonic era, that narrows down your focus and you can focus better in the area that you've now arranged for yourself. The constraints can come from the platform or medium that you're using. So an obvious thing in video games is Wii games cannot have as high quality graphics as PS3 or Xbox 360, let alone graphics of the quality of the PS4 or Xbox One. Mobile video games have all kinds of limitations, starting with small screens. And of course, they have to have a touch interface. They're not generally games designed for controllers, because that's not what you have with mobile games. Board games have all kinds of limitations because they're board games. The same with card games. But even in, in tabletop games, card games are naturals for hidden information because the information is hidden on the cards, and board games are not. 
So if you're making a game with a lot of hidden information, it might be better as a card game than a board game if you're in the tabletop format. More sources of constraints that can come from publishers. The tabletop game publishers might say it can't cost more than X dollars, which eliminates a lot of components. This can't be more than a $50 game or a $40 game or whatever. In video games, many games have to be free to play. That's what the publisher wants or that's what the studio wants. And the constraints can come from your audience. If you're making a real-time strategy game, you're probably not going to try to incorporate romance in it because that's not what people expect. That's not what they want from an RTS. If you're writing the rules for miniatures gamers to play on a table with miniature tanks and soldiers and so on, they demand authenticity for historical battles. Party gamers are not going to want to have to think a lot. If you make a game for young children, four, five, six years old, that quite limits what you can do. They can't even read at that age, many of them. Working under constraints is good practice for video game people because if you work for a game development studio, most likely you're going to work on something that isn't your own game and that you're not, it's not your idea and it's not really what you want to do, but you have to do it anyway because they're paying you to do it. The studio heads have to worry about making money. They hire people and they pay them to do something that they don't want to do. So you'll be faced with maximum constraints in that situation and you have to perform or you're going to lose your job. So, in a summary, we can say constraints are part of good art and they're part of good craft as well. They're not interference with creativity. Every creative art entails constraints and they should be embraced.